Hello and welcome back to Down the Slope. I'm Ewan and I am joined by Greg and Liam. How are you doing, Liam? I'm doing all right, mate. Doing all right. Let's uh, we'll get on to last night. Soon enough, I'm sure we can fucking make <laughs> ourselves feel a bit better by putting that game to rights or banging the game to rights even. What about yourself, Greg? How are you doing, mate? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Um, like Restless night last night? A wee bit, a wee bit, um, mainly because of hips, but we'll get out of that. <laughs> Uh, right, Sean Maloney's first, let's just crack on, right, Sean Maloney's first defeat as Hibs manager in his third game away to Celtic, um, f- bit of a weird one, Liam, wasn't it? Um, definitely seen worse Hibs performances, seen better Hibs performances. In general, what did you make of the game? We'll come to talk about a few incidents as we go. Um, in general, what did I make of the game? Uh, I think... Uh, on the balance of play, I think we're probably fortunate to go in 2 0 down at half time. Um, I think Celtic really dominated the first half and, and were kind of picking us apart at will. Having said that, we should have gone 1 0 up in the first place. So, you know, yeah. swings and roundabouts. The second half, I felt like uh, there was an element of professionalism um, about our opponents. They just kind of took the foot off the gas a wee bit, saw the game out. We demonstrated our ability to keep the ball, but not do a huge amount with it, other than a couple of a couple of moments. One when Cadden got in down the right hand side, um, it was just a bit of a mess. Second half, it was a pretty eventless, wasn't it? Really? Yeah, second half was definitely a bit of an event. Um, Greg, just the same question to you in general. What did you think of the performance? Um, <clears throat> there was definitely aspects of the game that were good. Um, my main concern was. As the midfield was getting absolutely overrun. Um, I think for me though, the, the two Celtic wing backs sit in the midfield, so it is very, very difficult to counter that. Um, however, let's get it right. We can't just pass the ball back the way you expect to win games of football. Yeah. Um, on the possession piece, as we start um, from JD Hibbs, shout out to him. Um, overall touches were seven hundred and fifty-seven to six seven two in Hibbs' favour. Hibbs also had the most accurate passes at 5-0-1-3-4-3-1, with both teams having an accuracy of 85%. So we can we can keep the ball, we can pass it accurately, but for me, we need to be more industrious yeah. with it. We need to be doing more. You know, We need to be looking to play a way to Cadden a lot more. Not, not so sure about Josh Campbell, though. Um, but certainly the backwards passing it isn't, isn't the answer for me. Uh, yeah. At Celtic Park, I think, the only way you're, you're going to win, win against Celtic is by having a wee bit of a go at them defensively. They're frail, um, but I didn't, I didn't really feel like we'd, we'd done that enough last night. Yeah, I think just with what you're saying there with the possession and stuff as well, I don't know if it was maybe a reply to JD's tweet because um, i seen that he had shared it or i seen it around about the same time. There was, for, sorry, from a Celtic point of view as well, I think they'd yeah. looked at it and said it was the least amount of possession Celtic had had all season, yeah. but mm-hmm. it was the, I think, third least amount of time they'd spent in their own sort of final third in terms of territory so I think that shows that albeit we had a lot of the ball it was very much in our own half to that sort of middle of the park which I think that takes transitions us in nicely to be fair three minutes in Hibs put together a really nice sort of counter-attack move moved the ball through the third really quickly worked it really well Uh, Chris Cadden puts good ball in Kevin Nisbet's I have to say it I think at the time I, I thought it was as a shock and miss, um, and I, I had it in my head that it was a yard out with about seven hundred sp- uh, yards around him. But Liam, I mean, what's he doing? How like if he hits that any way other than how he did, it goes in the net. As far as I'm concerned, inside his right foot, it whips near post. Left foot, it goes in like what? I don't even know. Like I've seen a lot of. Um... The guy Jeff Ashton's put up a tweet in the last yeah, day yeah. or something. Long bangers retweeted that he was talking about lack of confidence and stuff. And I don't really know if that's one of those chances that you can really put down to lack of confidence because he, he's not really got any time to think about it. Do you know what I mean? I mean he scored in his last game down. as well. Do you know what I mean? Uh like it's the kind it's the kind of it's the kind of chance that like you, you just put away. <laughs> like, yeah. it's instinctive isn't it like, I, I, I don't really know how if there's a huge amount more about it I could say like it's a kind of chance if it falls to your centre half you would back them to just probably stick it in the roof of the net because that's what centre halves do when they get into those kind of positions yep. I, it's a, I, I'm, I'm not able to explain it because there's no 
real reasonable explanation for a back post chance like that, which comes at him at a good speed as well, by the way. It's not like it's flashed across goal, because obviously um, the one Abada has later at the back post is a really, really good chance. But I think, to my mind, I felt like at the time, anyway, the ball was probably travelling quicker when it yeah. comes to Abada. Yeah. So, um, the Nisbet one is just, it's just a really good chance. And I don't, I, I seen a few tweets last night kind of talking about like the Chris Ilumo miss and uh, the, the Canoe missed years ago at West Brom and a few others. I don't know where it ranks in among them, but it's it, it's bad. I think, and do you know, I think the similarities with the, with, sorry, Chris, is it Alumo? Alumo. Alumo. There is similarities there because he's at the back post and he's put it right across the face. Like, for me, it's a concentration thing more than anything else. Like, I, I don't, I don't, you know, like it's early in the game, but just any decent contact. At first, I thought he sort of went with outside his foot, but it almost looks like he just sort of toe poked it. And I just, I, I, you're, you're celebrating before that goes in, aren't you? Really? You know what I mean? Like, Greg, that is, that is a sitter of all sitters. You've seen me play five, you're the back to me to score for there, probably just about. Yeah, well, I'm not sure I would go that far. <laughs> Because you shouldn't be in the box. <laughs> um, <laughs> no shooting in the box. See, see, for me, I think it's not confidence, it's not concentration. It, naturally, your natural instinct should be, I'll cushion that in my left foot. But there's more than enough pace in that coming across the goal just to cushion it in. And honestly, I, I was despairing when I seen it go across across the goal and, and hit off the other post. It's it's just unacceptable, you know, and there are no excuses for it. It's piss poor, and for me, it, that's as bad as it gets. To be fair, yeah. I would say that's probably worse than Chris Williams. So. I think it's potentially the worst miss I've seen live. And since, I don't since know Brandon Williams, the one I for can Man think, United against Norwich, the one that he's basically on the line. Mind, oh yeah, yeah. The one that springs to mind for me is Joe Keenan. Don't know if you remember against St Mirren. I think I'm sort of about three 0 up at the time, and it was when I sat in the second row, of the famous five upper, and Keenan for about I don't know six yards has hit the you no know, the advertising board in the middle of the famous five. Like okay, on yeah. a cutback, that's Don't surprise me. Um, but the straight after that, the ball seems to work its way back. I mean, ultimately, seeing exactly what happened is difficult because of obviously uh, Celtic TV were showing the replays. Um, but on the replay of the goal, you see it's with Macy. He sort of clips it out to the left. It ends at Josh uh, Josh Campbell's feet. He's trying to play a ball back to Josh Doig gets absolutely nowhere near it, and then we're just left exposed at the back. Liam, there's question marks over probably both centre-half positions, but does it ultimately just stem from looking after the ball? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <I. laughs> um, ah, yeah, I mean, Josh Campbell came in for a bit of a hard time on, on Twitter last night as well, and Thought some of it was maybe a wee bit, a wee bit over the top. I, I think Greg and I have said we're maybe not his biggest fans. I think he's a hard worker. He's probably, to use the word that was used earlier, industrious, but maybe not quite the most uh, graceful of footballers at times. And it, it's just a pass that's no on and he tries to play it. And he actually, the, the frustrating thing about it is I think he's got a bit more time than he realises as well. Yep. And he gets rid of it and he puts his defence under a whole load of pressure because at that point in time, we're focusing on getting our shape and how we're going to play out and beat this Celtic high press and that's all it takes sometimes you're playing against the high press is one really bad pass and it is a really bad pass let's have it right it's not it's not just slack or poor it's, it's a really bad pass because it ultimately beats the goal and puts us under a whole load of pressure uh, it wasn't the only one of those last night it's just that Josh Campbell yeah. that is punished with a goal and um, so he's kind of he's I suppose he's unfortunate in that respect but there's, there's a lot about the position and that's probably looks really really bad as a result of a really bad pass. Yeah, Greg, I know I, I, your general rule of thumb is just defend. You know what I mean? Like we've, we've seen it in the past where we spoke about a referee decision for a free kick or yeah. a loose, like you still got to defend it better. Um, what what did you make of, well, ultimately Hanlon and uh, Hanlon and Rocky are at opposite sides of the 18-yard box and Sorry, I don't know what the Celtic striker. I can't remember what the Celtic striker's name was, but he's literally got the freedom of the box. Yeah, I mean, uh, 
<coughs> going back to the Josh Campbell pass, it's so predictable. Um, every man in a blind dog can see what he's trying to do. Um, I think for me, fair enough, you, you know, Maloney's obviously trying to play football, but sometimes it does just need to go and see if it goes up the line, uh, then that's fine, but you've got time to get back into your shape at Celtic Park. They were attacking us 90% for the first half. In, ter- in, term- in terms of the two centre-halves positioning, incredible for me. I mean, it, it, it's just so amateurish. Um, first five minutes in Celtic Park um, and, and your centre-halves are that far apart. You know, I, I, to be honest, the boy couldn't have an easier first chance on a Celtic debut. And Aye. fair enough, he, he still got to put it away, but Jesus, do we make it easy for teams to score against us some of the time? A, a new manager, and, it, and it's uh, the old habits. I pers- um, I don't know. I think I maybe put it in, in our chat. I think we will concede goals like that between now and then. I think a lot of the goals we concede between now and the end of the season will visually look horrendous, like really, really bad. Because I just, I think. Are you in that? That's nothing new. We've watched. No, no, but no, but I ge- goals, no, so. but I think I think a lot of the goals we've conceded this season have been like genuine defensive howlers. I don't mm-hmm. think for the way Maloney wants us to play. I think we are going to expose ourselves that one bad pass could do that. You've seen it <laughs> late in the half as well. I think uh, Bashiri tried to play a ball in yeah. the middle of the park, um, and Hanlon managed to cut out sort of a two v one. It's going to be risky, and I, I know. You weren't overly enamoured with where Hamlin's position was, but he consistently took up that position really deep on the left of the box at the touchline. Mm. I just, I do think that's been drilled into him because it's not something we ever see, a position we've ever seen him take up under, mm. say, Jack Ross. So mm. it just it means the midfielders in these situations have to be so good on the ball. Um, I think, I think when everyone's fit, you'll find that Hamlin does play on the left. He won't be central. Um, I yeah. don't know if that's got something to do with it, but yeah, I think that. Like it's a disappointing goal to concede, especially, and and it is, let's get it right. It's definitely a worse goal to concede because you've had a good chance. Yes, actually, forty Fair seconds second, before aye. it. But there we go. That that's the Celtic of this season. So clinical, you know. But there we go. We move on. Yep. Um. Just mentioning the earlier about the midfielders and Greg's mentioned about the style of passing and stuff. Um, what did you make of that sort of mix? It, look, it looked anyway like a really tight midfield three, at least to start, um, with, of Campbell, uh, Doyle, Hayes and Newell. D- what, what do you make of that sort of three and how how what impact they can have, I guess, with this style of play? It's not worked in more games than it's worked this season, the two or the three, whichever you want to talk about. There are, there are occasions where it's been fine, Um Dundee United was one of those occasions and that was only a game ago that worked. I thought Doyle Hayes in particular was a lot more brave on the ball against Dundee United and actually was prepared to do things that he's probably not... Was it Dundee United or... Was it Dundee United or Aberdeen Newell missed? I couldn't remember which one it was. Um, was Because did he not miss a game through suspension? I couldn't remember what one it was. I was thinking about this last night. He missed both, did he not? Was it both of them he missed? I couldn't... I just couldn't remember for the life of me what the midfield was at Dundee United. In terms of the middle of the park, I just I saw it. Yeah. Sorry, and no, sorry, it totally. No, no, it's all right. No, no, you're 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 right. If I've um if I've if I've called it wrong, I thought he did play against Dundee United, but uh, having a wee. He genuinely might have, but I don't know. No, nah, he didn't. It was it was it was Doyle Hayes and Campbell. Yeah. I think singling out Doyle Hayes for his performance against Dundee United was right because I think he did a lot of things that he's maybe not been known for in his time at Hibs being prepared to kind of play a few more passes forward and in particular obviously stands out for the for the goal that Cadden scored. Um, but like I say, it's not worked in more games than it has worked. I, I, there, there, is, there is something lacking. I think Jack Ross spent a huge chunk of last season trying to find a midfield balance that worked. He even brought in Jackson Irvin to help find that balance in the second half of the season. don't think that really added a huge amount to the midfield. My worry is that Sean Maloney ends up trying to do the same thing as we end up trying to make a balance work out the players that he's got at his disposal um, I think the solution might be a lot closer to, to home than he thinks but I know that that's not necessarily a view that's shared by all on the podcast mm-hmm. but um, I, I think there's Doyle Hayes and you for me I think have been relatively consistent in saying I think they are too similar um, yeah. they are too, and they're, they're both of them find it too easy to play the easy pass and I think mm-hmm. if you look at it 
based on the pass he played last night, maybe Campbell's becoming guilty of that as well on occasion. Yeah. Um, Greg, just before we talk about the second goal, I feel from the moment Celtic scored, it was maybe a little bit of a shot to the system, I think, obviously. Um, Celtic really did start hamming us down, especially that left side. Um, I know Liam said earlier he maybe felt like it could have been a lot more at half time. I guess without Celtic creating any maybe obvious chances, they did have a lot of joy down that left side. Um, do you think that was just the formation that exposed Josh Doig so badly? Um, I, don't, I don't know. I think it's just the midfield having no real balance to it. I think if, you know, the way where Cardam is playing, you need a lot of support from the midfield. I think that, to be honest, but before we move on to the penalty, yep. let's pick up the possession that, that, that Greg Taylor has. He's got the absolute freedom of Parkhead in the middle of the park because the midfield are all over the place. So for me, that, that that's where the issue lies, is that yep. the midfield the needs to protect in the there. defence. Of course, you know, the midfield needs to protect the defence. Um, uh, and it's one ball over that, that isn't really defended properly. But What do you make of the me, penalty? It's not a penalty. Liam, you know, same there. Oh no, it's not a penalty for me. Yeah, for, on, I mean, for, I mean, for a couple of reasons. <clears throat> let's be honest. You know, when you're defending, you know, and going in like that, where are you meant to put your hands? You know, you yeah, he, he's slowing down. You know, like you know what like, I mean. Like, yeah. it's it's incredible. And, and you know what? Let, let's be honest. You know, Willie Collum hesitated for, for all the zero point zero zero one seconds before he pointed to the spot. Uh, you, you're never going to get away with that in Glasgow. But does it, um, again, maybe I've, I've, I've not watched highlights, so I've only seen it maybe the one time after. I swear it hit his chest first. And I'm sure the law is if it hits your body, on other part of your body first, on yeah, your arm, yeah. it's not handball. And it's, yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't really, I, I, I can't, I don't think it was Willie Collum that gave it because where Willie's, where Willie's position was, was actually, Behind Josh Doig, so how has he seen it? Um, unless he's got that, incredible that's, eyesight. That's an as well, honest, isn't that? Yeah. E- even the linesman hasn't got a clear view. So if you're not sure, you can't just give it. See, but, this is the only way I can think it was given. And again, I've not seen Collins' position, but with him being behind the play, uh-huh. I guess what he's going to see is Doig running. But he's going to see Doig's back and the arm mm-hmm. out there. And then the ball hits his arm. I but get, how what, can he be what, sure that it's what, not? Yeah, no, his chest. Exactly. That's what I'm going to say. Colum can't see that it's hit him or not hit him. The linesman mm. can't see in, and surely because a bad is in between it. Yeah. So, but. and people are saying it's not a natural position. If you're running at what is probably a good pace, he's then trying to stop because mm. he's about at the six yard box. Have you ever, like, when you go to slow down while you're running, your arms go up as a natural, like, must be something to do with motion or something, but it's a, that is a natural position if you're trying to slow yourself down. They're going to have to start yeah. putting pockets and football shots for players to put their hands eh? in. Yeah. And, and then if they're running, the and then when they're running and they go to stop, they just fucking fall first because they've not got their arms to. Uh, I just. Uh, it's just like when you're defending that. Like, I think he, he's jumped at the same time. You know, you put your arms yeah, out yeah. as well. You know, I, I don't really know where you're meant to put your arms. You know, like, let's just cut them all off. It's just incredible <laughs> stuff, but the, the, the rules state that it's not a penalty, but don't let that get in the way of you, Billy. Don't worry, they're going to spend three million on bringing in VAR and it's yeah. going to take all these problems. Uh, do you know what? Did you, still, you know still the same idiots operating it. Well, this is what I'm going to say, though, right? We've, we've, not, we've not got any full-time referees. We've got about, I think I wrote a, about eight that day top flight games. Uh, who the fuck's dead in the VAR? Like, who's going to be sitting at Hamden on that? Like, we've, have, have we actually got enough? Some idiot today? that's never played football before. You can guarantee the compliance, it. <laughs> the compliance officer who did the, the compliance officer know the like an employment lawyer or something. They, yeah. they weren't even a football person at all. They get the yeah. compliance officer to do it. <laughs> and like, see that? I came okay, what they'll do. They'll do. I don't know if you've ever listened to like sports sound or that. Like, if. Hibs haven't played in the Saturday, they do open all mics. They always have someone in the studio just watching all six games at once. 
that'll be what it is. Just just one person watching all six games, and if uh, if the if there's two instants at the same time, then they'll just sort the Glasgow ones first, and the rest of us can fucking wait. But can, can you imagine? Can you imagine Alan Preston? Penalty hats. Penalty hats. Willie Cole's just going biscuits. Biscuits. Is that a penalty or is that not a penalty? Oh, geez. it's absolutely madness, isn't it? But there, there we go. Um. <laughs> I mean, after the penalty, like Liam, you said Celtic definitely, if they hadn't already, they took full control of the rest of that half. Um, I guess probably were glad to get in at 2-0. Nah, it was fucking <laughs> brain for half time. <laughs> that, honestly, that, whatever it was 20 odd minutes was fucking long 20 minutes, I tell you that. Oof. And it wasn't like, well, I'm not saying Celtic were like completely carving us open, but it's just the number of pot shots and stuff that happened yeah. from the edge of the goal. There was one, I think it was the first half anyway, where Matt Macy fucking kicks it right to a bad on the edge of the 12-yard box. And I just thought, here we go. <laughs> just that face, I summed that one up. <laughs> Didn't have to say any words there, Liam. Did I call um, it the 12-yard box again? You did, aye. But we'll just, we'll, just, we'll, we'll just let that one slip past. Um, oh, it's the it's okay. box <clears throat> the compliance officer, I think there's a 12-yard box as well. Um, <laughs> did you expect Maloney to make any changes at halftime? Obviously, at 2-0... Um, Obviously he didn't, but were you surprised that he didn't? Um, I, I think I was a bit surprised. I thought he would try and beef up the midfield. Not if there was one man destined to be taken off, it was Nisbet. But there we go. I, I, for yeah. me, I would have stuck an extra midfielder on. Um, I'm sure we'll come his stubs, but Aye. absolute head and hands at every single one, to be honest. Right, look. You're sounding, you're sounding awfully like Harry these days, you because that's the second time recently as well. You said half time, half time. It's just half time. And and one of you, one of you <coughs> said, no, no, it's the way you say it. It's the emphasis on half. It's like half time, half time show. It's like you think you've been watching too much like... NFL. <laughs> so, someone said, I can't remember. It was your Harry. One of you said last night, Maloney called a poor game. I was like. Harry, that's Harry. Game. That's that Harry says. I was like, who, is he fucking Mike McCarthy? Like, don't fucking start talking about that shit. <laughs> um, look, the second half was a non-event. Uh, you said that earlier, Liam. Is there anything that actually happened in that forty-five minutes that you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about individual performances and maybe the substitutes? We I mentioned them at the start, and I've just been focused on a positive for just a minute. Uh, we had a wee bit of discussion here last week about. Chris Cadden's role in this team. Um, yes. We were praising him after Dundee United. Um, he, he deserves praise again because he's one of the very few players to come away with any kind of credit in the bank for that performance. The guy just runs and runs and tries and things don't always come off for him, but just the amount of positions he gets himself into where he can make something happen, where he can go and effect, effect the play, whether that's defensively or or without the ball and, and, and kind of pressing and closing down space, or whether that's with the ball and constantly offering an option up the right-hand side. Quite often he's a decoy as well and doesn't get used. The guy just goes and goes. Eh? He's, 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 a, he's a joy to watch just because of his energy. Yeah. I'll be honest, I thought Dre Wright was all right last night. I know, and Greg, I know you, sort of, you actually didn't think he was that good in the first half, but I thought any time we did get forward, Dre Wright played quite a good part in it and I actually thought he probably got it was okay. It was decent enough. Yeah, actually, it was just okay. Well, no, aye, no, he was all right. Let's aye, get it right. He was okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Cadden any other, for me is aye, po- aye, other... one. Po- possibly Bashiri maybe gets pass marks as well, but I don't know if I'm being a wee bit too generous there. But certainly, far too, Cadden. <laughs> far too kind. I think Bashiri gets. I think Bashiri gets the benefit of it being his debut. I think. Aye. I would say. Um, the fact that it's his first 90 minutes in about three years, Liam, that you tell he, us last he, week. He grew into it. He grew into the game, yeah. but he could have been responsible for, for two Celtic goals in the first half. So, yep. um, yeah. Aye, no, I think yeah. that's fair. Um, right, substitutions, dreadful well, every single one of them. Right, well, let's... <laughs> <laughs> before, before we talk about the subs, because it wasn't, it wasn't the first sub, but um, two players in particular seem to have been... In fact, three players seem to have been picked out. We've already spoke about Joe Newell and Jake Doyle Hayes, so we'll maybe not talk about Joe Newell, but um, Josh Doig and Kevin Nisbet on the back of last night have both taken the majority, if not all, of the fan base's anger at last night. Um, Liam, what did I'm going to be honest, I've not, I've not just seen any in and against Josh Doig. 
No, I've so. seen quite a bit on Twitter the day about Doig. Um, more just about, not necessarily. I mean, I've seen a lot of people saying why why did we not take the money that we that we got offered? We'll, we'll never get it again. Mm. Don't think he's that good. And maybe just people saying he probably needs taken out of the team, which I would probably agree with. Um, but what did you make of day two in particular last night? Um, or anyone else that you want to highlight that you thought was maybe particularly poor? Nisbet was obviously was just poor. Um, I, 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 I think Nisbet's had enough stick. I don't really want to lay into him as well. Yeah. Whilst I said that the chance missed there uh, last night wasn't because of confidence, I do think there is a bit, of, a bit of a confidence issue overall with the player. Um, there is a bit of a work rate issue as well in my eyes. Um, I think he does go missing a lot. I think the demands placed on you as a lone striker are maybe greater than what Kevin Nisbet can give this team for ninety minutes. And if that's the case, then he needs to be dropped or changed around. Um, I certainly wouldn't be in favour of playing him against Cove. Doig, I um, think he's been he's been tough, a tough watch all season. This has been major second season syndrome for him. I don't think he's hit the heights of last season. Um, I think I said last night that Stevenson has been better than him almost every time he's come into the team. His performance has been better than Doig's last performance. Um, so I don't really want to rely on Lou Stevenson at left wing back, but I think that's where we are, isn't it? I would, if, if Stevenson's in the team, I would almost be rather he was playing left centre back. But I think Doig needs drop. So, <laughs> so much for having great squad depth. Thanks. We've got no one at left wing back that I want to play. Aye. Well, for me, this is a, I was thinking about this. I feel, if we're playing a flat four like we did last night, I think Stevenson has to play. Just with forms, with Doig's form just now. Uh, personally, uh, if we're playing that sort of flat three, four, three, or three, five, two, or whatever sort of makeup it is, I think Doig's fine at left wing back. He gets Hamlin or Stevenson or whoever the left centre half is covering in behind him. But in a flat four, I'd start Stevenson every day of the week right now. Um, and I think, personally, I didn't think Doig was helped much last night. You know, I don't, I don't think. I think he had a bad up against them, and obviously um, was Juranovic at right back? As, no, who was it right back for Celtic last night? I think Juranovic was at left. No, was he at right back? I can't remember, but yeah. the full back and it felt like he was two on one a lot, and I don't think he was helped at all. Um, Greg, I'm not going to say much about this, but there's not much more for me to add on what Liam said. Um, but what did you make of both of their performances? I think Doig is struggling massively. I think he really is. I mean, I think he's probably struggling because he struggled last night, from my opinion, because it's a totally foreign position to him. Um, he's not used to it. Um, I think Nisbet has got a certain level of confidence issues, but I think it's also he's not really willing to put it in at the moment. Um, there was one of his one of his shots that was just better off just fucking kicking over a throw. To be honest. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I don't want to, to, to slate too many people. I know that Mullery's trying to give players a clean slate, but I think there are some players that don't will not come back into favour with fans. Um, the substitutions were a bit strange for me as well. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what you guys thought about that. I think that you were trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, you and um, no, I just... there, are, there, are, there are players that came on that should not be at a Hibernian football club. And, and to be honest, the, the clean slate only goes so far because these players aren't going to do anything. Well, I think last team. night was the clean slate in terms of, especially for probably one or two of them. So what was it? Let's go through them chronological. So was Murphy the first? Uh, Murphy the first sub. I think Murphy for Campbell. I, I think is that so. right? Or was it Murphy and right? So I think Murphy and Steve. Uh, yeah, no, I think I think, I think uh, let, Murphy let, let, was let, definitely. Let, I'm sure it. Murphy was definitely first. <clears throat> I'm positive Murphy was first because you two were going off your fucking dinger. Um, so well, no Mar- wonder, Ewan, come on. <laughs> no. no wonder. He is, um, he is honestly beyond dreadful. So Murphy came on for Josh Campbell, I'm sure. Um, oh, and that was a surprising... It was surprising for me mm. at the time because I just assumed our first attacking sub would have been Chris, Chris Muller. Given that Chris Muller didn't even come on the park, it makes the Murphy sub less surprising for me. He came on in the two games that Maloney's uh, managed before then and obviously scored at Dundee United as well. That's for me. Play- 
playing more on the right last night, which means we can't do as usual and cut inside and lose the ball. But guess what he done last night? Cut inside and lose the ball. Um, look, so we didn't even need to speak about the... Campbell no, was probably the right he's... sub. I think it was right to take Campbell off. Not sure about my fake of coming on. After that, we also had Stevenson come on for Josh Doig. Might have been at the same <clears> time. <throat> Again, I thought that was an okay sub. Um, and at the same time, James well, Scott okay. came on for Kevin Nisbet. At the same time as that. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why that imposter is still at the club, to be honest. But... Liam, uh, you've, got, you've, you've, got, you've got a boy there on the bench. Muller, and if not, you so you basically your two most attacking players have not come on the pitch last night when you're 2 0 down. Yeah, Liam, uh, James Scott, he was the one that for me, I definitely thought that was with what Maloney had said in the press last week, uh, this week, right, last week, um, about doing well in training and what he has to try and earn a place in the team. For me, that was one of them, right? We're maybe not expecting much at this point, go on, try and do something. I don't think we'll see much for. I don't. I generally don't think we'll see many minutes for James Scott for here on in. Do you know what my worry is with James Scott? Is that only Hull have got a break the loan clause and you don't? And that's why he's still here. So he's not here out of choice. He's out here out of necessity. Yeah. Um, because I think whatever ability James Scott has, his attitude the first half of the season for me means he shouldn't still. Be, he, he, and it's not anything to do with last night's performance, but he should be at the club. Yeah, if you can if you can yeah, get yourself fit season. without you're 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 not injured but you're not fit, it's it's yeah. damning. So it? no, nah, so 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 if you can't look after yourself to play for a club like this, then off you pop back down the road. But I, I suspect the problem with James Scott is that we can't we can't we can't send him back. Maybe we can, maybe maybe we'll go back for the end of January, maybe Maloney was just being nice and we're, we're looking to see if we can get someone else in. But it was a baffling substitution to bring him on before before Dodge for me. Yeah. Um, or before Chris Miller. And then the final two subs, Liam uh, and Greg, just let used to chat about them. Uh, young Stevie Bradley came on, coming back for his loan, and Scott Allen came on, um, a player that... The Hibs want to offload. But, so why is he coming on? I, 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 like, I think the, the, the difficulty is the bench. We want to offload after what was on the bench. Last well, this night. is it. Do you believe the papers? How many of these players that came on last night would have even been on the bench if Melkerson, Henderson, uh, Porteous, McGinn, you know, like, were, were available and uh, Clark as well. Like, for me, is James Scott even on the bench if you've got Melkerson available? Probably not, I don't think. Mate, he's not even been on, he's not been on the bench for months. So, so the answer is no. So we brought these players in and before we brought them in, he wasn't even on the bench. So no, the answers the answers the firm no that he's not on the bench. I mean, and to be honest, Scott Allen shouldn't be on the bench. Stevie Bradley shouldn't be on the bench. He should be going back out alone. I don't mind the Bradley one. Just like I, I, I don't mind it because because he's done nothing wrong. To fuck you off. Because he's not been here, <laughs> so he's done nothing wrong. But it's an experienced it's, one that one, isn't it? Really, more than anything my, else. My difficulty with Bradley is no. I think it stops him going somewhere else on loan, and and. Yeah. You know, having played for three clubs, I, I'm 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 worried with the Bradley one because I think he was kind of he's been hyped up by some based on ten minutes against Hamilton when we were four and cruising. Go just, go just and say some hyped up he's, by Harry. He's great. Go just go just. <laughs> I, I think Harry's not alone. I think there's a lot of people oh, yeah. keep on saying give Bradley a chance. It's like O'Connor and Laidlock based on fucking what? Give them a chance. It's like no, that Stevie Bradley did not shoot the lights out at Air United. Doesn't mean he's not going to make it at Hibs. But probably says that he's not quite ready to be thrown on at Celtic Park when we're two 0 down. Yeah. Um, Scott Allen. I mean, other than the Dundee United performance, has done nothing this season. Nothing. And you can add last season to that as well. Um, Scott Allen for me is we've gone over this a million times. Nice. Uh, I don't. I don't see a way back from. I really don't. And if if we were to offload him and get some, get some for him, or even just get his big contract off the wage bill, that'd be nice. Yeah, Liam, I know um, you mentioned it earlier, so the player I believe you were referencing that would have done more than a Scott Allen coming off the bench, uh, probably specifically in that position you feel, is Melker Halberg. Um, he's obviously been back in the squad the last two. Were you surprised that he wasn't one, given the general vibe of the subs was trying things out? Are you surprised that he wasn't one that came on? 
I was I was surprised based on who came on the park that he wasn't one. <laughs> yes, <laughs> based on who, who was picked before him. Um, to be honest, I would have brought him on for Boyle Hayes or Neil. Yes, when Neil, if Neil, if Neil at half time, if Neil was going off, I thought Halberg would have been on. And hundred percent. I think, I think the, the, Hal, the Halberg one's a funny one, just just quickly, just because yeah, he's, yeah. he's obviously he's obviously been injured this season, hasn't hasn't kicked the ball for us yet this season, as far as I'm aware. Um, his last sort of two or three performances for us uh, for the Dundee United semi final where he was parachuted in and was man of the match. It was absolutely brilliant that day. Um, played up front against Celtic in the last league game of the season. <laughs> I don't know if you boys remember that. Him and Dr. Dre up top. <laughs> um, but he's he, he's a player who's been asked to do all sorts of things. He's played the right back in the League Cup last season. He's played, he played as a fucking ball winning holding midfielder when that's clearly not his position for half a season. He, he's, he's never really got a run in the team in his favourite position. Yep. Uh, my personal perspective is I don't think he's ever let Hibs down um, and there was guys getting on the pitch last night who have let Hibs down countless times who got on the yeah. pitch before him countless times if, if, even, if when Melker, they're, even when they're not even when they're not playing football they're letting Hibs down like James Scott couldn't be asked getting himself up that's letting Hibs down you know Scott Allen yeah. has let Hibs down this season he's not been good enough Jamie Murphy is, is, is genuinely sleep paralysis stuff. What watching Jamie Murphy cut inside is, is a definition of sleep paralysis. Greg, I think your opinion is maybe slightly different on Halberg than Liam's. Um, you're maybe not entirely convinced that he would give us anything that we've not currently got from the, those that have been selected ahead of him. When Halberg first came in, I was delighted. I thought, you know, spoiler looks a player he can take the ball off. Of the defence, he can spread the play. He, you know, he creates a bit of urgency. Well, the two jokers in the middle of the park last night created no urgency. So why, why not try him out? You know, yeah. he, he's not harmed Hibs. He's not, as Liam says, he's not done anything wrong. So why not Why not try him out? Because Joe Yogan, going back the way, at every single opportunity is beyond shite. I'm sorry, but, you know, let's call it out right now. Joe Newell has had a couple of good games this season so far. One of them was against Rangers in the semi-final. Since then, dreadful. He just goes back. He wants to go back all the time. Doesn't want to venture forward. Look, look at look what happened at Dundee United when he ventured forward. He, he scored. You know, I mean, how many times have we said out, that? Yeah. But he's too busy trying to pick out the easy pass, and that that pass to Hanlon last night was the fucking absolute pits. I'm sorry, that was ridiculous. Yeah. See, um, this is the sort of Halberg, stuff. Do what Halberg can do. The other two can't. He can run. Travel the other, the the other two and just run. He, he, yeah, yeah, he, he, he can carry the ball, which is when you're playing against the high press, can be helpful. He, he makes runs into the box. He does try and get on the end of things, and 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 he he's a just a much more positive player. Um, he doesn't maybe have some of the defensive abilities that particularly Doyle Hayes has. Um, albeit he's been asked to do that role, and I think he's done okay there. But he, the the guy can run. He's an athlete. Like I just don't think that Newell or Doyle Hayes. Are ever going to be that, that player for us? And yeah. they are too similar. If he does leave this window um, without playing again, my and that's probably your Greg as well. Lasting memory, Melker Halberg will be him losing his fucking shit at Rafe Rovers pre-season when he came on and took a corner, and he was just fucking screaming at I think Ryan Porteous for not making the right run when they were taking a set piece. Um, <laughs> well, there we go. I mean, a wee, wee bit of passion for him pre-season. You know, it's nice to see. Joe Newell's a mute. Uh, it, Joe, Joe Newell has really annoyed me after last night. Really annoyed me because that that that's just the, that that's just piss poor. It's lazy. Oh, it's, it's boring. It, genuinely, it, it's got no place at Hibs for me. Like that that's bad. So the memory of Melka Halberg will be his missus making our three year uh, three year <laughs> uh, tw- Twitter ban to like like my picture. <laughs> Cut final day, wasn't it? <laughs> After having no, no activity for three years, I know for Halberg, Alan Thor kind of feels. She obviously just he, he did miss a great chance against Halberg. Hertz at the start of the season with Hecke. He caught it on the half volley and the oh, yeah. went wide. He scored against Hibs yeah. as well, didn't he, in the 3-1 game? Yeah, that, that, is, that, is one, that is one of the only Hibs goals that I've been at the game and not seen. It's That's genuinely, I think, one of three or four games I left early when the third goal went in I was out to there 
and little did I know I wouldn't be Eastern Road for the best part of two years after that. Um, right, Cove and the squad size. Um, right now, we've got quite a big squad. What you think of the quality within it is entirely up to yourself. Um, but numbers, it seems pretty strong. One of the, Only one of the new players uh, played last night. Will we see any more feature against Cove? And just generally, what do you think we will see from Maloney on Thursday? Will it be a lot of squad rotation or will we go strong? I mean, I think we've got quantity, but for me, there's not a great deal of quality in there. Um, I would like to see Halberg come back in. Um, take your pick between Julian and Henderson. Doyle Hayes. Um, I would probably, I'm not, I'd, I'd I'm probably not go Henderson and Halberg. Ewan. Sorry. Settle. <laughs> um, I would also play play Henderson. Um, Melkerson gets in there if his work permits come through. Uh, Mueller gets in there. Doidge gets in there. Um, Stevenson gets in there. And that's about it. Hamlin and Rocky. Seven changes, man. Eh? <laughs> I'm, Mate, I'm, I'm, why I'm not? I would also yeah, get Macy. I'll, I'll, I'll carry him back down to Arsenal if they want, like. Right, let's so that, let's piece this team together. I think we'll see against Cove then. Dabrowski and goals, I think, would the three years be in uniform yeah, in that selection? He has to play, he has to play, yep. he has to play. Yeah. Right, he shouldn't be here. Yep, no, I yeah. think that's, I think so, that's so, see, see if he's not even going to get the cup games and go and just send about him out for, for his own sanity and his own career. Because if, if he's not fancied, then he's not fancied. But the biggest the biggest insult would be if he plays that David Mitchell. That that would that would probably be the end of that that would <laughs> by far and away be the end of the bridge. Oh, I would be funny. Great I sense. would I would actually fucking love that because we don't we'd obviously because with it being the cup game with all our season ticket seats being in different bits. See if the three if we're all together. And Mitchell's player, I can't wait for him just to chuck one in and just watch his two go fucking tits. I would really, really to be like honest, it wouldn't that. be difficult to have better distribution than Macy, so he's probably already one up on him. Um, right, let's, let's build this team off the basis that it looks like Mar- mm. uh, Maloney's first choice formation is probably going to be a sort of three at the back, then a four, then a sort of other three. So back three, obviously McGinn and Porteous are still out. McGinn and Porteous. McGinn and okay. are still out, so probably I would be looking at Stevenson, Hanlon and Rocky if I was to pick the three. That just sounds shite, doesn't it? Um, uh, that just sounds really bad, doesn't it? We need another centre half in this one. Though. Let's get it right. Well, we're missing three right now, so I don't, I don't know care. if we need another I don't one. Care. Yeah, Paul McGinn. Yeah. <laughs> he, he should be in the stand every week, but there we go. Well, he'd always bring Dan yeah. McGregor in. No, absolutely not. He's another one. <laughs> but aye, would you, would you, if we were playing a back three, would you be playing Stevenson as part of that? Or would you go with the same? It. Or would you stay? It, 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 draw, it was actually all right at left centre half against Dundee United. It was, I. So, it was. so I, I think based on that, he gets in. And based on the fact that Josh Doig's on an absolute howler, he gets in. <laughs> you were going to say something else there, I fucking know it. Uh, left family w- show. Liam, are you uh, that your back three, Jank? Aye, fuck it, why not? Left wing back, Josh Doig or Nabdi? Nabdi. <laughs> Sean Mackey. <laughs> Sean, nah. he surely he's fit yeah. now. <laughs> he's got to be. He's, he's good to go. Be. Um, unless, uh, I had, is there anyone else we could play there? Probably Dre Wright. Uh, I mean, you could be ambitious. That, that's slip, that slip cut stuff. That Let, let's. Do you right, know what? Fuck let's it. not get let's, silly. Let's let's get really silly. Cadden left wing back. Boyle right wing back. No, no, because Cadden shit on the left. We've seen it before. <laughs> Yeah, Cadden is more used to Hibs on the right than anywhere else on the pitch. Yeah. So he's right wing back. So right, Cadden and Doig. Cadden and Doig wing backs. If it's a free back. I think he's going to have to try and shoehorn Muller, Melkerson, and Doig in there as well. Right. Let's 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 great. So does uh, midfield two? Surely, because we are shite, we should get an extra player. <laughs> um, midfield two, mid, mid, Henderson and Halberg for me. Yeah, I would. I would mm. like to. See, I'd like to would see that as well. I don't see the point in. Can't wait for it to be Newland Doyle Hayes. 
just I don't see the point in Booga. having. Uh, I just I don't see the point in having Halberg on the bench don't. if he's not in contention to start. Well, where's his goal. clean slate? Who Gogic? Where's his? <laughs> Gog- Gogic <laughs> didn't get a slate. <laughs> so, I, I think I think I think, I think Gogic got his audition in the second half against Aberdeen, didn't he? Yes, yeah. aye. and and and. As expected, failed horrendously. Didn't get the part. <laughs> but did he not start the game? Did Gorgic not start against Adler? No, no, he, he didn't. He came on for an injury. Oh, yeah. right, okay. Right, so, oh, I Doyle Hayes went off, didn't he? Um, right, so that leaves us with the front three positions. So I guess you're picking from Melkerson, Mueller, Boyle, Nisbet, Doidge, Murphy, Bradley, Bill and Tate, maybe. Nah, nah, you're, you're picking Melkerson, Mueller and Doidge for me. You know, give give do you know what give Boyle a rest as well, stick him on the bench. But for me, they look like these they, those three run riot. Doidge needs minutes, Melkerson needs minutes, and Mueller needs minutes. I would imagine that they all have enough ability to beat Cove Rangers. Yeah, uh, same for me. I think there there is there is an area like making too many changes and that. Uh, so I was going to say, uh, uh, spell and cop upset, isn't there? Because Cove are flying at the top of League One, and it's a it is a good league, but ultimately they're a championship team. Um, so yeah. we we should have enough, and we should have enough in the the tank. I, I I'm I'm probably all right with that as long as we've got Boyle and Nisbet etc on the bench to call upon yeah. if we need them. Uh, I think Chris Mueller needs to play. He's not played a game of football, a meaningful game of football since late November, early December. He needs to play. Melkerson needs to play. He's in a similar boat. And Christian Doidge needs to play. I think more than anybody at this club. He needs minutes in his yeah. legs because yeah. he's looked a shadow himself since he came back at Minji. So, so, I, so I would think it, I think we should play a three-four-three. Three. I think that, yep. that was pretty reminiscent of what it was against Aberdeen and Dundee United. Yeah, and that I think, would I think be you, seven I think you changes. Might possibly, I think you might you might possibly actually see Josh Campbell stay on the left, but there we go. Well, so if 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 we're saying that Doig is at left wing back and the rest of the team is what we've said, that that'd be seven changes. I think. The only yeah, players keeping in place would be Hanlon, Bashiri, Doig, Cannon. Cannon, aye. Which, so the back four. To be honest, They're literally the back four, the, but in a different form. No, lucky. And three of those are only getting picked because there's no cut else. Aye. Um, no, Hanlon's been getting picked for five years because there's no deals. So he's still. What do you make of the what do you make of the squad size um, currently? With obviously the nine subs and the uh, so the, uh, the nine subs and the five subs that can be made in the game, um, do you think we might hold on to a Scott Allen to a Halberg um, due to just increased selection availability? Nope. We need to. Oh, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't think. We, I don't think we need to. To be honest, I would rather us only name seven. Subs, um, if it meant mad, mad quality on the bench, I don't, I don't want to see players like like Bradley getting put on the bench for the sake of it when he could be out on loan, getting experience. Same with Dylan Tate. I think he needs to go back out on loan, get yeah, get experience because for me, there, there's no point just putting these boys on the bench for the sake of it. You know. Again, but, were you surprised he wasn't on the bench last night when Amelka Halberg was when a Scott Allen was? Um, yeah, I'm surprised he wasn't on the bench when Jimmy Murphy's getting on the bench. Um, <clears throat> Scott Allen, you know, James Scott even getting on the bench. You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm actually, uh, come to think of it, I'm surprised that Dan McKay got sent on loan when we've got jokers like that on the bench. What did you fair. What did you make of Dan McKay's loan move? Because that's he's, did he's we better than Jimmy Murphy. That, did we speak about that last week actually? Did we? I we did. covered I it did. in the I podcast the three years, um, yeah. and I, I, I think, I think we were probably thinking it was a decent move if it was under the premise that he was playing more minutes. But I think yeah. last week we were probably expecting there to be a few more outs than there has been. Yeah. We're now on the 18th of January. I don't think really anyone's yeah. actually left the club yet. Uh, yeah. Gullen, other just Jamie Gullen. Oh, I suppose Gullen uh, and, and Dan McKay. But other than that, two two players uh, that. I, I, think I, I was I was okay with it last week, but seeing James Scott on the bench last night, he's maybe not okay with it now. Well, I don't I don't understand it. Yeah, just um, we'll get a quick score prediction, then just talk about you. have mentioned there the transfer window. There's twelve days left. We'll see if there's anything else you boys want to see in. But score predictions for Cove. Hibs having eighty percent possession. 
Newland Doyle, he's just passing it back the way of the game. <laughs> and the score? 2 0 Hibs. Yes, Elian. I think it's going to be fucking close. Eh? I think it's yeah. going to be a really close game. I, I think, I think, I think Cove, when you're playing a team that are in the habit of winning, it will be difficult. And I think they were difficult last season when we played in the League Cup. Yeah, I think we'll win 2 1. I didn't see much that worried me last night. I think we were good. We've been generally pretty good under Maloney. I think we'll be comfortable. Hopefully see uh, plenty of changes. I'm going to say 4-0 Hibs. See, see, no matter what level you're playing at, see if you're in a habit of winning against a team that are all over the shop, then... See, but, uh, you know, I just I don't, I don't see how we're all over the shop. One defeat. Wait, that's it's one defeat in five, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's not yeah. like it is. It's one defeat. It is one defeat in five games. Like, and I, I don't think the team or Maloney will. I don't think Maloney would let the players get too downbeat after last night. He seems a very positive guy, and I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna have a go at him for that. I think that like this early on, he's got to try and keep the group together. Get everyone on board, um, isn't it? I think. I think he'll have his own opinions on. On who's good enough and who's not good enough, but yeah, it it, it will take time. But I think we, a, a convincing win on Thursday would would set us up nicely. But at the same time, we, we need more bodies in the door. Let's be honest. Yeah, well, so what, Greg? What who else? Uh, what else would you like to see um, between now and the the end of the window? Obviously, we've got the Cove game and two league games in that period of time as well. Um, does it is it dependent on players leaving? Do you think just with the size of the squad, um, and could it be direct replacements, but potentially up in the quality? Yeah, I think I think it possibly could be dependent on who leaves, but I think there's also space for another couple to come in, even if boys don't leave. I like to see another centre half of, of good quality, preferably left footed. I'd like to see a left sided player come in as well because we're very light over that area of the park. Um. But other than that, the only other one is that if we let a couple of midfielders go, then you want to bring another one in day, man. Yeah. So really, it is dependent on if boys leave. However, I think it should be proactive in, in going after players. You know, There's no point waiting for players to leave if there's opportunities that come up for players to be able to be brought in. Yeah. Um, Liam, what have you made of the links... Uh, in the last week or so, it's been what Scott Allen and Christian Deutsch linked with Dundee, uh, Boyle. It seems like it felt like over the weekend that I was going to wake up on Sunday morning and it was going to be announced that Boyle had signed a contract with that Saudi club. And it seemed, but I, hadn't, I didn't actually see one actual report. It was just seemed to be rife amongst the Hibs supporters no, you made of the rumours. Um... I think it's probably more likely than not that Boyle goes before the end of the window. Um, I think that club will eventually just get their act together and meet the valuation and pay the transfer fee that a £30,000 a week player in their eyes is worth. So I think he might might well go, which might lead to us bringing in some reinforcements. I think me, for me, the key the key thing is, is whether or not we give some of these guys a chance. We stop by giving Halberg a chance. If he, he's given a chance and he performs and he plays well, and I don't think we need to go out there and sign another centre midfielder. But if we let him go and we let Allen go, we probably do need to go into the market for another centre midfielder. Um, didn't really occur to me until tonight's podcast just how short we are on the left hand side. Aye, so I probably agree same. with Greg that we need to get someone in to play that left wing back role potentially. Um, and I don't think that's an easy position to recruit for sometimes. There's a very specific type that you're looking to bring in there. You know, Chris Cadden's brother got a left foot. In a similar mould. <laughs> I think Nicky Cadden is left foot, doesn't he? But I think he plays kind of a bit yeah. forward forward. Um, but yeah, a left a, a left a left sided player. Probably not as in as much of a rush as Greg is to sign a sort of left sided centre half. Um, I think we've probably got just about enough there. But um that's on the understanding that Harry Clark's injury is yeah. not too bad because I think his injury allows because he can play a number of different positions. I think it allows us to maybe shift guys across. Uh, one I think would be okay. Um, but then again, you know, with Dodge as well is another interesting one because if, if we are seriously listening to offers for for Dodge, then we would need another centre half, uh, centre half, a centre forward in, yeah. in that kind of mode. Um, 
And I'm also of the opinion that we should be on the lookout for better all the time. And that yes. if there was a goalkeeper like Benji Seagrass that became available, oh. he would yeah, there we go. Because they've signed, they've signed a, they've signed a Swedish goalkeeper. Well, um, the, the, the noise from Tam Carson go out and loan. The noise from Tam keepers in the books. The noise from Tam Court says that the like Seagrass is staying and they're competing for the for the jersey. But I would agree with you. I don't see a team and again and. Team like Dundee United, but I don't. But then I would say we probably thought the same when we had Bogdan and Marciano. Yeah, uh, and I, I can't I, believe be honest, I missed out a goalie. Jesus, <laughs> I, I think the from what I read about the the, the goalkeeper they've signed and his, his CV, I'm not saying for, for certain, but it doesn't sound to me like the kind of goalkeeper who's come to be number two. Yeah. Um. So I think it's at least a competition for. For, for the first choice, obviously Trevor Carson's going out and loan. Um, I, I know that you know, they're chucking a bit of cash about this window, but I, 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 I seriously think that if Seagrass became available, I should try and make that happen. Yeah, I think for me, um, it's the centre half position totally depends on the length of Harry Clark's injury, because I think on the face of it, you think six to eight weeks, right? It's not that long, but we are at mid January now, so like six to eight weeks is you you're pretty much hitting the split by about that point, I would think. Split will be start of April, I think. I mean, because I'm sure the season's been pushed forward a bit in terms of finishing to allow for an earlier start next season because of the World Cup. So depending on how long Clark's out for, um, I think maybe we might need another centre-back. Um, the centre-midfield position, I think we would bring one in if Halberg and Allen go. I do think that position is, and I'm not saying that it would be a case of, I don't think that's anything to do with money wise. I just think it is purely numbers. Um, yeah. And I know we have been pretty critical of Scott Allen. Um, Allen and Murphy season, are on big contracts as well. We they, know that anecdotally. Yeah. They're on, they, Allen and Murphy are two of the highest earners at the club. And it, make, <laughs> it would make commercial sense for the club to try and move those two players on with the contracts they're on and because and, and, essentially they're bench players now but they're, they're guys that come off the bench you don't have two of your highest earners contributing yeah. 10 or 15 minutes a week they're both out of contract yeah. in the summer as well yeah, yeah. quick enough and then I think <clears throat> again it depends on if Boyle moves on Boyle and the, the circumstance from Dodge I do think Craig Fowler and even the news pretty much dismissed any link with Dodge leaving almost straight yeah. after the was it the Dundee Courier or something sort of released yeah. their article but uh, I'll wait and Should see the sort of positions that Mueller and Melkerson <laughs> probably take up as well with, to see if we need another regardless, there, but regardless of the way that Mullery wants to play maybe Dodge isn't you know his preferred option however it's always good to have that option on the bench where you can go a bit more direct where you maybe can put more balls in the box and ask him to attack it. So I think he, he's probably quite an integral part of the, of the squad. You know, if he's not starting, then he still has a, you know, a place in the squad because you need to mix up some of the time. I feel like under Jack Ross, we're too predictable. So I feel like Maloney's got, got it in him to mix it up more. Um, but I definitely think a goalie, a goalie is a must because that, 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 that boy's really not up to it. You, I feel like that was very much a panic buy. Um I thought Macy was all right last night, I'll be honest. I thought he's... I actually think in the three games... And I think you could probably argue and say the three games under Maloney have been Matt Macy's three best games, definitely, this season. Aberdeen, mm-hmm. Dundee United and last night. I don't think... And especially considering the form he was in towards the end under Jack Ross. Um, this distribution was better last night, but still nearly cost us a goal. Yeah, <laughs> and, and and there we go. No, no, it was. Laugh, it was improved. But, <clears throat> oh no, 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 I mean, no. We literally say that he his his distribution was better. However, he only gifted Celtic a goal. For me, not acceptable, and he does it too often. He, he's not. He's not a hips goalkeeper for me. He, he he's not good enough. You know. But. I do. I, I I don't. I just. I don't expect to see much happening in the in the rest of the window, and I think a lot will hinge on outgoing uh, especially Boyle and I think as a fan base we need to be prepped for if Boyle goes or no we're not going to be splashing cash because you can't, I just I, I wouldn't even want us to spend that money this Monday I don't, I don't like just 
get players in to cover the rest of the season and then spend it properly in the summer would be my... Uh... Because, because clubs know you've got that money. So clubs will, will try and push the boat out and, and take the piss. You know, you know yeah. all these football experts that can point places out on a map that I think they know leagues inside out and no players inside out. But let's be honest, nobody really knows players like, like the club do. You know, well, that's the, it. I think you've seen will, will the ones we brought list. in where the ones we really well, wanted. So well, the, if we go club, and sign will, someone at the end. The club will have a list of possible replacements. You know, I think I think we'll see a lot more movement in the summer when when people move on and a few of them will not go with my base wishes because they've not done enough for Hibernian. But for me, the summer is the big one where you know you've got a lot of time there to build a good squad to be competitive for you know for third place or second place or whatever but you, you can build a squad in the summer it's very difficult to build a squad in January so so let, let's be realistic right whether we've got players to play the system or not we will probably be stuck with them until the summer but in the summer you, you'll yeah. probably see Sean Maloney bring his own players in uh, and do you know what? A lot, a lot of times fans go on about managers putting their stamp on the team. We're not going to see Maloney's proper stamp on the team with his players until the summer. You can yeah. see it with, with system and, and formation and style of play. But until the summer, you're, you're not going to see Maloney's squad. So, yeah. I think I'll be telling if we get... If, I don't think... If players come out of the January window without new deals, then I think that's... Yeah. Um, I think I think we're done but, giving players the deals. I think I think we are done. I think we've done it before the window, so that players are free to sign deals elsewhere. And to be honest, hope a couple of them do. Hope James Scott goes back down the road as well because yeah, he's a waste. Of energy, right. Cove on Thursday night. Uh, we've all predicted Hibs wins. Uh, we'll be back next Monday probably uh, reviewing the Cove game and looking forward to the Motherwell game next Wednesday night. Obviously, we had a, a good result there on the opening day of the season, so hopefully we can replicate that next week. But we will be back doing a full preview for that next week. Boys, thank you very much for coming on again, and thank you for listening. Cheers. Take care. Cheers.